and just talk about how practice is on the first yeah. couple of days? Well, well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Greg Sankey for being in commission of Southeastern Conference. He's a great decision by our presence and athletic directors. He's a first class person. He'll do a great job leading our league. Obviously, stepping in some big shoes there, of, uh, Commissioner Slide. And, uh, so, congratulations to him. But hey, I've been very pleased with you know, our effort. And we've been two, two days in helmets. And uh, we've got a long way to go, but the work ethic's really good. The guys are giving good effort. And we're pleased with that. And I hope you're any questions. How are they just digesting all the new information so far? Well, good. You know, I think we've done a nice job in our all season because of the new rules, being able to meet with the normal footballers and much more prepared coming in. This is about my sixth time doing it, so as far as implementing the new system. So a lot of trial and error through those years, and I figured out probably the, the best way is to uh, get things taught um, in, a, in a timely manner for the players. Um, but, but again, the, all I told them was the effort's on you right now, the execution's on us. Now eventually, you got to learn to execute within the scheme and what we're trying to do. But just give us effort right now. We'll coach the rest of it. And right now, then somewhat pleased, much better day two than day one. Well, you went to you guys in different positions of where they played last right? year. Right now, um, you know, there was a lot of hybrid guys. Um, they played a star position, which, right. is, which is a nickel for us. Um, we asked our nickel to do a little bit more coverage. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, in our scheme and system. Uh, but Moncrief and, and uh, Mitchell and some of those guys are, are playing on a Sam slash nickel for us right now. Uh, and uh, we're still trying to, to, to roll guys in and play different roles. Y'all know me, we're going to cross train a bunch of guys in different spots. It's more about teaching the concepts of what we do and how we do it, not necessarily putting a guy in one spot because, you know, when you're going to have some injuries, you never want to be in a situation just putting the next guy in because that's where he's wrecked and you put the next best player in. And uh, that, that's what we're kind of gunning for right now as we teach our system. Tim Irvin, kind of a just a natural fit for that nickel role. He does a nice job. He's got a really good feel in the slot. Um, but, you know, Tim was a, you know, was a really good, had really good return skills, you know, coming out of Miami. Uh, with the ball in his hand, he's a running back also in high school. But he's got really good instincts on the field. Uh, the work ethic and all of that, it's just a hard transition coming mid-year, especially if, you know, um, you know, coming into a new situation. It's good for him because everybody's hearing it for the first time new. Um, but, but again, we just got to continue to build his stamina, his endurance. Um, but, but he's going to be a good football player. You know, he's got a long ways to go, but I've been pleased with his you know, playing nickel and also playing at safety. Well, he does a nice job in the deep part of the field. I mean, he, he, he's got some really good instincts as far as reception area and uh, running the alley and those sort of things. How has Carl Lawson looked to you both in bowl practice and now he's having practice here? Very good. You know, he didn't really do a lot in bowl practice other than just some individual stuff, but he's been engaged. And uh, we're limiting about half the reps of our team periods right now, even in helmets, and we'll continue to do that when we're in full, full pads. Um, you know, Carl's a good football player. He's played extremely well, well here at Auburn. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to really watch him and monitor his reps through spring practice. But I've been extremely pleased, first of all, with his leadership ability and how he positively affects the guys around him. Uh, he plays extremely hard. Football is very important to him. He's in the film room all the time. He's asking questions constantly. He's texting me all the time <coughs> about questions about what we're doing within our scheme and system. So he's the right guy to coach. He's so similar to the size guys you had in the book. Before we, I mean, obviously, I think he'll guy, be very effective. What, what do you see from him when he, you know, if he st when he stands up? We haven't seen him a lot in that. What, what do you think he's capable of? We seen. Well, I haven't seen him much either, as far as that, that's concerned. But I know he's got very good initial quickness, and he's got a very good first step, and that's that's one of the critical factors at that position you have to have to be successful. Well, what what have you seen from Trey Matthews thus far? Well, Trey's a physical player. I saw that in bowl practice. He enjoys contact. Uh, again, another guy, football's important to him. He, he really enjoys the game. He's, he's constantly in the building, watching film, asking questions, works hard on the practice field. Uh, but, but an instinctive player. He's played a lot of football uh, for a young player. And, and a guy that's, you know, obviously has made some mistakes, learned from them mistakes, and has moved on from those. But I've been pleased with his maturity level. Okay, kind of on that note, not said. Everybody isn't excited, but do you see a little bit more from him? Just because I mean, last year he kind of knew everything he did. He was sitting out, but now this year he's fighting for a start. Well, I don't think there's any question. You get you know, obviously humbled by some experiences you go through in life, and I certainly he has. And uh, you know, hats off to Coach Malzahn and Jay Jacobs and Auburn University for giving a guy another opportunity.
this may seem like kind of a weird question, but is there a certain kind of pleasure in doing going back to just being an assistant coach and not doing as much as this or as much as administrator? I love you guys. <laughs> it's, mutual, it's mutual. But uh, I mean, is there a certain you didn't seem very sincere? <laughs> Sincerity was not there. You didn't sound very sincere either. Far of me, you love me. No, but, <laughs> but just, the, just the fact that you you can push ball, you're not you don't have as many. Well, I was. Things. I understand the question. I was very involved defensively at Florida. Regard, and, um, regardless of popular opinion, I wasn't as much on offense. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, should have been. But. Uh, no, I, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy being in the room. I enjoy a lot of things that, as a head coach. You, know, you get pulled away from your meeting room and your position players, um, the defense of that preparation. But I was extremely involved with that when I, in my time at Florida. Um, that certainly, uh, there's things that I really enjoy about being a coordinator. That you experience those things again. But I'm very, I've been, I'm very comfortable here. Uh, you know, I've been, Gus has been great. Uh, and the staff has been outstanding. The players have been very welcoming. Everyone has been wonderful. And, and there seems to be like one challenge for every defense coordinator in college football now is defending the fast-paced offenses and everything. Yeah. Do you? Can you kind of reach out to Gus and kind of? Absolutely. I mean, I think sharing ideas is very important. He's very open um, about what we need to do to be successful. And ideas from him that he sees from an offensive perspective that I may see from a defensive perspective that may be, not be as effective as I think they are and other things that are much more effective. And the rep and the entire offensive staff and Gus have been outstanding as far as this. Thing. But that's what good staff do. They share ideas. They make sure that, you know, that we're able to share information, practice the right way, prepare our football team um, um, you know, totally to be, to be successful. And that's what... Uh, that's what's been a great experience so far. Well, is there not just here but anywhere? Defensive coach that probably wants to be wants to be knocking people around every practice and uh, and these kind of offenses that maybe don't want to do it as much as have you and guys talked well, about that? No, unfortunately the word spread is spread around way too much. Since he's been in the Southeastern Conference, I think six years as coordinator and head coach, he's led in the rushing five. When you leave the SEC in Russia, you have physicality about it. You know, and all those formations that we create, um, you know, we run the two-back power, the two-back counter, the inside zone you know, with the, the six-man spacing. Uh, you know, we have a very physical run game in what we do offensively. Um, right now in college football, a lot of people are running very similar offenses. And generally, in my experience, defensively, guys get very used to what they see all the time. And you're used to seeing uh, that type of offense, that tempo of offense, uh, the passing concepts that go along with it. Um, people have gone far and away from the traditional two-back running team. You know, I think in our league right now, LSU and Arkansas are probably to that point. I know Alabama will certainly be in some of that, depending on their personnel. but. Uh, you know, right now, in those are teams we got to beat. So we, we need to prepare for that. And, and we take portions of practice, and we will continue to do so to prepare our defense for those things. And Gus, is, that was his suggestion. Those are the things we need to do to be good defensively. And we're going to have a very physical spring. Uh, we've been in helmets for two days, and we're going to get the pads on Saturday and get after it. Well, have you moved any defensive ends or, or working defensive ends inside, like an Elijah Daniel or Andrew Williams? Um, Andrew has worked both at end and inside, or, and he will continue to do so. Elijah will, will, has worked strictly at end. He's been slowed a little bit with the hamstrings, nothing serious. He has practiced. Um, but he's a guy that's got some flexibility. Devontae Lambert obviously is out this spring with an ACL, but he will work inside and out. I think that when you get into nickel situations, which in our league you're, you're into a lot now, um, you've got to be able to match up with some of the guards in, in our league that aren't as good as the tackles. So you, when you're able to match up a better athlete inside and create some one on one it's harder to chip inside. And you can't, it's harder to, to chip a three technique as opposed to chipping a guy on the edges. It's much more difficult protection-wise to get that done. So when you're able to structure uh, an attack of protection a certain way with a better athlete inside, you'll certainly try and take advantage of it. What are you hoping to identify and trying to find that third linebacker? Obviously, you got Cass and Chris back. But who do you think should really emerge in that position? 
Uh, well, I mean, again, I've been pleased with, with uh, Justin Garrett and, and, uh, and uh, Trey Williams. I mean, those guys have done a nice job. You know, you know, and right now in, in our scheme, we're playing over 70, close to 80 percent the last two years, maybe three years, of nickel or dime. This is where the game's gone. And everybody talks about numbers of linebackers on scholarship. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you're, you're primarily playing with two inside backers. And then you're playing with five and six DBs. And in a perfect world, you need probably eight total mites and wheels on scholarship as far as that's concerned, as far as your numbers, because you need as many pass rushers as you can find, as many big guys up front as you can find, and you got to have secondary guys and enough guys that can cover in the slot for us and what we do schematically. So right now, I've been those four from an inside standpoint have, have stood out, and, and I think Javier Mitchell's a guy that's got some athleticism that can do some things. He's been a very good special teams player here. Um, so we'll continue to rep all those guys, but you know, I wouldn't say any of those guys have stood out. There's no question where they are above the other guys. What are you working that try that with? Trey Trey, Williams. Just an inside backer. Right now, those guys should be really interchangeable. Our Mike and Will is pretty mirrored in what they do. I mean, it's, you know, those guys just kind of do the same stuff. Will, for you, having a chance, even though you weren't coaching, but having a chance to watch some bowl practices, yeah. how much did that help you when you got on the field? To start well, it just helped from a work, work ethic standpoint as much as anything. You know, good players, the ones I've been around, they like to work. They like practice, they enjoy that part of it, they enjoy the film. You know, I mean, we're all blessed in different ways, and the guys that, uh, that have, obviously, talent, but then on top of that, the ability to work hard, and that's what you saw a lot of. And so, um, you know, from, from a scheme standpoint,